at the 40th anniversary. Here it is, the big one, the Flying Fruit Fly Circus. 40th anniversary here, December 2019 in Hovel Tree Park. I have with me the legendary Kim Walker. And um, Kim, you uh, came to uh, Aubrey as an artistic director in what year? Oh, I think it was 1988. In fact, I'm pretty sure. I came in 1987 for... A, um, to do a show, but then I think I took on the gig in 88, and then I was here for 10 years to 2008. Yeah, but that must be 98. <laughs> oh, did I say 88? Yeah. Shall we yeah. start again? No, 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 it's gold. <laughs> so, you were in fact, you were in fact artistic director here for 20 yeah. years. I was not a maths teacher, okay? <laughs> Every show oh, had 200 finer. kids in it. Yeah. No, that's how wrong. That's 100 kids. <laughs> yeah, those dates. <laughs> anyway, yes, that's right. So late 90s. What yeah, brought, late 90s. What brought, you know, your pedigree as, a, as an Australian dance icon, um, choreographer, uh, performer, Australian ballet, so many, uh, your, your background, your pedigree in dance in Australia is absolutely extraordinary. But you make this decision to come to the Flying Fruit Fly Circus in, uh, in Albury. What brought that about? It was, it was kind of like a slow burn. I was um, doing a, a children's fashion show in Melbourne and the Flying Fruit Fly Circus, the producer Greg Randall got the Flying Fruit Fly Circus to come up or wanted to get them to come up and be part of the show. So I had to come down to Albury and look at them. So I did, and I thought it was quite extraordinary. They came into the show, it was amazing. Um, then they were looking for a director for one of their shows, and I went, oh yeah, that's fantastic. And I come from, my mother was a, a, a folk dance teacher, and her philosophy was every child should dance or be in the arts. So, you know, I have a passion for that as well. So then it was a slow burn, then the artistic directorship came up, and I went, I wouldn't mind doing this. I like working with young people. I like kind of seeing the next generation of artists as they grow. Of course, it's so important to have arts in our society and culture, uh, unlike Morrison doesn't think so. Apparently not. Apparently uh, not. But they can be put in the same baskets as road building. Absolutely. <laughs> Very similar. <laughs> Freeway to artistic freedom. <laughs> hey, um, now, but there's a little bit of a change in the transition going from dance into circus. Now, uh, what, how did you how did you work in with this, that getting the circus knowledge? How did you s draw in the circus knowledge? Well, you know, I was very lucky because Lou Gone Wrong was there at the time that I came. So, you know, that was pretty much sorted in terms of that. The skill level was absolutely growing. Um, you know, Lou was a fantastic person. So I kind of brought an artistry and infused dance into it and a bit of a narrative into the circuses and things like that to kind of begin that change. And as we know now, it's kind of gone through that change and now it's back to other things. So it was really interesting, yeah. And we brought, I brought, a, a you know, an indigenous aspect to it as well because I did a show about Concolino who's Australia's, you know, greatest tight wire walker, who just happens to be Aboriginal. So, um, yeah, that those was, kind of things. That was Skipping on Stars. Skipping on Stars, In the yeah. early 2000s. Um, and that clown, Daniel Catlow, oh. broke his <laughs> foot or toe at a swimming pool in Melbourne. On the opening night. <laughs> what a dork. What a dork. <laughs> I don't think I'm still forgiven oh, him for that no. one. <laughs> no, no, no. Catlow, no. Now he's jumping out of planes. Now he's jumping on the Gold Coast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't we all? As soon as I get down to the Gold Coast, I want to jump out of it. Exactly. <laughs> out. <laughs> what do you feel when you feel being part of this? Look at these crowds streaming past to see the one o'clock matinee here on a Saturday. How do you feel about being, having been a part of it? And you're still a strong part of it, you know. Uh, you're, you're one of the sort of spiritual mentors of this organisation. Yeah, it's, a, it's an extraordinary... It's an extraordinary um, it's an extraordinary place. I mean, you know, these things grow out of small things and visions of Bomber and people like that, you know what I mean? And then they just kind of grow and grow and grow. And to be part of that, because it is a family, I was um, thinking about it last night watching a couple of those movies and it's like, you know, we're on Wiradjuri land and this is part of Wiradjuri land as well, you know? So, and it is an institution. It is given so many young people uh, a avenue for their artistic, you know, kind of um, sensibilities or aspirations, and you know, they, it, 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 
art and dance and culture and circus allows young people to have to dream yeah. and to dream and to do what they want to do and to do what they love and to take that and share it around the world because yeah. that's what the Fruities does. They are worldwide. It's not just here. It is not a little circus. It's an international circus that has trains up young people for the arts and circus and physical theatre all around, you know, the world. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm interested in transitions um, and I'm wondering what when, when you left the circus, which was late 2008, yep. Eight. Um, what 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 made you make that decision? What when did you say no? It's time. I've done my bit. It's time okay. to move. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a pretty much. It was one of those things of you know right ti timing was right. Um, I'd got to. I'd had ten years. I'd had a whole bunch of kids from seven to seventeen. Yeah. You know, so I'd seen a whole crew through. And then I thought to myself, and we'd built up the circus again because you know when I came there was some you know serious financial difficulties. And there were some serious concerns from the from the funding bodies and so forth and so on. So we built that up, we reinvigorated it, and we you know got it onto an, another plane and things like that. And then I came to the conclusion of, okay, I can go one of two ways. You've done, you've set out what you wanted to do, either you change the model, and you know start a small company within that that's an offset to the circus. Or it's time to, to, to move on and give another person, an, an artistic kind of, a new artistic director, a different vision. So it was kind of like the perfect timing. And then, you know, I was fortunate enough to get a job at NASDA, which is the National Indigenous Dance College. So And National Indigenous Dance College at uh, Gosford. At Gosford, On the yes. Central Coast. Yep. How are you loving it there? I've been there 12 years now. I'm I love it. I just thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. It's fantastic. I mean, once again, it's such a an inspiring thing to be able to give skills to young people to know that they're going to go on and they're going to use culture and dance and creativity, dance filmmaking, music composition as part of their artistic journey, you know, and they're going to go back to community to do it, they're going to go around the world to do it and to just see them grow like that is um, fantastic because I was very fortunate as a young boy, I had a mother who made me dance, but I did love dancing. So I had that as a young as a young person, and I was, you know, mentored through all of that. So um, it's fantastic to be able to flip it around a bit. What now? What's what's the next thing in the Kim Walker story? Don't know. Well, the next thing in the big in the Kim Walker story is still at Naisda because we have we have fantastic plans to um, to expand again and to have our some more accommodation and some uh, an international um, cultural dance space, contemporary dance space. Um, so that's what we're aiming to do at this present time. Yeah, fantastic. Gee, it's been good to talk with you today. Um, you're coming to see the shows tonight? I'm coming to see both shows tonight, so I'll see you in scene. Yes, yeah, so, gee, it's been a long time since we worked together. We worked together on The Gift. The Gift, absolutely. Backyard Barbie. Backyard Barbie, absolutely. They're two fabulous shows. Canada Tour of The Gift. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You were the one, I, I remember John when you came to me and you said, I've got this idea. There's this fellow called Michael Bublé. <laughs> He's big in Canada. So all the, all the speaking that we had in Australia where we you know, used to go against the politicians and say things, let's use him instead. And I went, I don't even know who this person <laughs> is. <laughs> I'll go with you on that one, John. Let's do it. <laughs> so we did. And then two years later, he's the megastar that everyone knows in the Michael world. Bublé, yeah, 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 yeah. We were always ahead of our Alwa time, King. Always, always ahead <laughs> of our time. Cutting edge. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It's just been wonderful to see you again. And Good thanks for everything you you've done for the circus and, and Naisda and everything like that. It's just, it's, uh, it's been, a, you know, it's, it's a great thing to, that you're still part of the Australian cultural, not only heritage, but, you know, its future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kim Walker.